Ladies and gentlemen, you're about to witness some scenes from the next attraction to play this theater. This picture, truly one of the most unusual ever filmed, contains scenes which under no circumstances should be viewed by anyone with a heart condition or anyone who is easily upset. To avoid fainting, keep repeating. It is only a movie. Only a movie. Only a movie. When I was a kid, it was before VCRs. So the films like Last House on the Left was the was the film that your friend's older brother saw. So you'd have them going, oh, this is a movie. And they take the girl and they're pulling her entrails out. And I remember when I finally saw it, it actually lived up to the description. Are you gonna scream? Hello, Sydney. So disturbing, um, but Nightmare on Elm Street was a film that traumatized me. I remember I saw it on a VCR and I had to pause it and I think we played Clue for like six hours just to like cleanse ourselves of Elm Street and then I had to finish it during the day. I was actually too scared to watch the movie. He reinvented the genre several times. He began with those gritty, nasty, hardcore films, uh, you know, A Last House on the Left and The Hills Have Eyes. And then he did the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, which exploited surrealism and the imagination and the dreamscape, the landscape of the nightmare. And then he reinvented again with screen fantasies. So he literally reinvented horror three times in my lifetime. One of the reasons why this film is so powerful is that n I can't define exactly what it was, and I still can't look at it. It's not a film I go back and say, oh, I think I'll take Saturday afternoon and just watch that old film again. It's like, it is still an assault of film. It is still a film that just is completely uncompromising and does not make you comfortable. Um, and uh, beyond that, I can't define it. All I know is that I did not have any restrictions on what I shot, except that what I wanted to impose, and I wanted to deal with something very, very um, nasty. You know, it was dealing with anti-personal violence and just how ugly it could be. And um, you know, you end up with films that's in many ways ugly. You know, and. Uh, it's unjustified except that it, those things exist and um, you know, art is about things that exist. The man himself was based on a man who frightened me as a, as a, as a child. Woke me from my sleep uh, one night shambling down the sidewalk uh, in Cleveland. And uh, I got out of bed to see what, what it was and I looked and there's this guy dressed very much like I made Freddy dress like. Really? Yeah. I think he was just a random drunk going down the sidewalk, but he had an uncanny ability somehow to realize this little kid was looking down on him from a second story apartment window and he just stopped and then he just looked right up at me. And like that, you know? And I fell back and, and sat on the edge of the bed in the dark and my whole family was you know, asleep and counted to, I don't know what, a, a thousand, you know, something I thought would, he, he certainly will go, but I haven't heard him go, but he must, he must have gone, he can't be waiting. And I went back to the window and he was waiting and just like that. And then he turned wow. and he walked down the sidewalk looking at me and he walked around the corner and I, that's where the entrance to our building is. <laughs> Ran to the front door to our, of our apartment and I heard the door of the street, door to the street open. And I just, uh, I went in and punted on my brother's door. He was 10 years older than I was. And I said, there's a guy, he's coming for me. And you know, my brother literally went down with a baseball bat and wow. the guy ran away. But the essence of that man was that he enjoyed terrifying a child and enjoyed sort of destroying the, the comfort of innocence. So that's, that became Freddy. Three, four, 
he considered horror cinema to be a creative and positive experience. He famously said, horror movies don't create fear, they release fear. As far as he was concerned, watching a horror film was a way of working out your personal demons in a safe space. As far as he was concerned, violence in movies needed to mean something. My films really aren't about gore. They're about uh, the terrors that people have inside of them and uh, ways of dealing with them. I'm always afraid of, of the truth being hidden. And I think in quite in most cases, horror films have to do with bringing out a truth that's been hidden in our culture. That is, that there's a very violent side to us as well as a, a side that's uh, very civilized. Good appetite, healthy prints, secure home. Uh, is this your van? Oh, uh, goodness, no. Uh, it was just standing here when we got back from shopping. Did you see anybody around when you pulled in? Trouble? Uh, well, as a matter of fact, we did see a couple of men, one black, one white, walking away as we approached. We thought they were service people of some sort. You know they're working on your door, don't you? No harm done. Uh, we'll check the house. Just checked it, even looked under the beds, clean as a whistle. Well, let's recon the neighborhood, there's still a chance. You get a lot of this sort of thing? It's as if we're the prisoners and the criminals roam free. I don't know what you mean. Well, you're lucky you're all right. This van was used in a liquor store robbery last night. Oh, goodness. Liquor store? I'd advise you to stay inside, keep your doors locked for a while. You can count on it. I think a good horror director is talking about, you know, the primal fears and, and uh, if you want to be honest about talking about those things, you have to get down to the nitty gritty about fear and things people do to each other. It's really the great hook that Wes knew was universal, which is the bad dream that somebody can enter into your dream and manipulate you, that they can take advantage of your own private secrets, your fears, uh, your, your, your private knowledge, and exploit that and use it against you. Mm. Corn syrup. Same stuff they use for pig's blood and carry. Surprise, Sydney. Glenn! Wake up! Are you there? He was a double threat, Larry. He was a writer and a director. So if we had trouble with a scene, he could fix the writing as well as restaging it. This is the moment when the supposedly dead killer comes back to life for one last scare. Not in my movie.